We are here today with Paul Lumley, the Executive Director for the Columbia River Intertribal Fish Commission. Can you tell me a little bit about its mission and its purpose? Well, um, we formed uh, in 1977, that is the Columbia River Intertribal Fish Commission, and it was a time of um, upheaval for the tribes, and they were trying to organize themselves. Uh, there were what I term as fishing wars. People were not happy with uh, who got to catch the fish. There were several lawsuits, and at the time, um, the tribes decided to come together because they had the same language in their treaties, the treaties that were signed in 1855, and that's to um, to fish at all usual in the custom fishing places in common with the citizens of the territory. We work with the entire Columbia River Basin, which is much bigger than most people think. Uh, it includes a big part of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, as well as parts of Montana and Wyoming, and goes all the way up into the headwaters in Canada. And when the salmon swim out of the Columbia River, they most of them turn north and, and, and go all the way up uh, to Alaska, and some even go as far south as Mexico. So it's a pretty big uh, geographic scope. So tell me about the primary goals of the Fish Commission. We have uh, four uh, goals of the Fish Commission. Uh, to protect the uh, Treaty Indian fishing right, to restore the salmon runs, uh, to share salmon culture with the public, and also to provide services directly to our fishermen. So let's talk about that first goal, putting fish back in the water. How does the Commission do this? We have uh, many ways of putting fish back in the river. Uh, the first is through the use of hatcheries. And if you can find a biologically appropriate stock of salmon, you can raise them in a hatchery and take advantage of uh, the salmon's life history, uh, increasing their survival rate, and then you can take those same fish and release them back where you collected them. And when they come back, they can spawn naturally. So you can put the fish back in the river in that manner. We've had some very big success in the Snake River Basin. Uh, for example, with the Snake River Falls Chinook, we were able to uh, use the same kind of method using hatcheries as a natural stock recovery tool to go from a few thousand fish to over 40,000 fish, with a large percentage of them are nat successfully uh, spawning naturally. And these are the same stocks that are listed under the Endangered Species Act, and so we could be looking at uh, delisting of salmon stocks, all from a tribal program. So I notice we have put fish back in the water and provide fisher service. To me, those kind of sound like the same thing, but can you tell me a little bit about the difference between the two? Sure. Well, providing fisher services is really directly to our fishermen. And so they fish out on the Columbia River, and uh, when they try to sell the fish, sometimes the, the price is really bad. So bad that they can't even make a living off of it. So what we're trying to do is to increase the price of the fish for them. Mm -hmm. And the best thing, way to do that is to teach them how to handle the salmon better. So to keep them cool, and to get them to market in the best possible condition. And you know, we've been able to increase our prices for salmon. Uh, even in these economic downturn times, we've been able to increase it dramatically. And in some cases, it's the commands the highest price in the Columbia River. So that's providing fisher services. And we do that by uh, making sure that they uh, understand safe food handling practices and also where to market their salmon. I know that salmon culture is a gigantic piece of native heritage. Where does it begin? We made a deal with the creator. The creator said, if, uh, if I give you these first foods, if these first foods will sacrifice themselves for your survival, uh, you will survive. But you have to, in turn, take care of these first foods. And the tribes never forgot that. And so every year we have our uh, first salmon ceremonies, and we honor the salmon in that way. Uh, if you were ever lucky enough to come into a longhouse where we have one of our first salmon ceremonies, then you'll see how we even honor them, all of our first foods. First, we set the water out and then comes the, the salmon, followed by the game, and then the roots and the berries. These are all our first foods. And you are welcome to attend one of our first salmon ceremonies. In fact, the public is as well. How can we, as an evolving sustainable culture, support the efforts of this heritage and commission? Uh, several ways. The first is you can be really more conscientious about what we put into the river, even in our own homes. It goes down the drain, it goes out into the Columbia River eventually. So being really careful about what we put into the river. Also supporting all the great work that people are doing 
to restore habitat that salmon survive in, to uh, promote initiatives that um, protect habitat by uh, changing our agriculture and logging practices, and um, also just by donating. Uh, there are several organizations that do fantastic work out there to restore salmon habitat, including uh, the Columbia River Intertidal Fish Commission. You can go to our website and you can donate there at www.critfc.org and you can donate. We'll make sure that your donation makes it to on the ground salmon habitat restoration work. All great information, very educational. I'm Holly Fee, giving you the tools to be sustainable today.